Well, I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by uh, Dr. Nora Volkov from the National Institute on uh, Drug Abuse. First of all, welcome. Thanks very much. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. Thanks for having me. Now, what would you say are the, the, the links between drug abuse and uh, mental illness? There are multiple links, uh, but as a clinician, perhaps the most relevant one is that how um, frequently the comorbidity of mental illnesses with substance use disorders and how that comorbidity influences the trajectory and perhaps in some instances even the risk of uh, mental illness. And that's why they are so extraordinarily important. From the scientific perspective is the commonality of factors that ultimately drive vulnerability for mental illnesses in general and for substance use disorders in particular, such as, for example, we know that social stressors um, are very important in all of the diseases that we recognize. And there are also data indicating that certain genes may increase your vulnerability to a widespread variety of disorders, not just uniquely one. So like the serotonin transporter gene, it makes you more vulnerable to social stress, which can make you more vulnerable to depression on the one hand, but can make you more vulnerable to taking drugs. And finally, the way that our brain is organized in networks and circuits and drugs influence circuits that are of relevance in multiple mental illnesses. And specifically, it weakens their function and by weakening their function, therefore, it makes uh, individuals that have mental diseases more vulnerable and can exacerbate the disease condition itself. So that's where all of the interest comes around. So how important is it, therefore, that everybody works together? People who are uh, fighting drug abuse, people who are caring for people with mental illness, how important is it that people actually uh, work together? I think it is crucial. And in fact, I would say that we should consider the notion of how do we integrate it right. better. And for example, in terms of the training of psychiatry in the residency training, psychiatry should be exposed and trained to be able to properly manage substance use disorders in general, but also very specifically the comorbidity of substance use disorders with mental illness. Right. And it should be, it's, it's, it's our responsibility as psychiatrists to ensure that we provide the best treatment for our patients. And we cannot do that if we know, don't know how to address the substance use disorder component. Right, so, so bring it into this uh, conference. Tell me a little bit about some of the things that you'll be doing at this, uh, this year's conference. Well, I, uh, the presentation on the frontiers of science, which uh, is, highlights one of, what some of the most advanced areas of, uh, of science in the mental illness, and I'm going to be presenting vis-a-vis -vis the advances, scientific advances in substance use disorders, understanding addiction, and understanding in parallel how the circuits of the brain that are involved with motivation, with reward, with saliency, are influenced by drugs and how that then influences other diseases. I'm also going to be an in, on an interactive session of the commonalities that we observe on uh, drug addiction as a disease of the brain and that of obesity right. as another disease right. that also has a very important component on, 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 on the contribution of obesity. The, the other one is I'm going to be giving a presentation to the chairmen of the Department of Psychiatry in the, the various academic centers in the United States to highlight, again, the importance of substance use disorders in mental illness and the importance of training the next generation of psychiatry so that they can properly manage substance use disorders and not just uh, limiting it to those that are going through a fellowship program on substance use disorders. We need to make it more widespread. Okay. Well, final question is, uh, one of the slightly contentious issues in the United States recently has been the, the partial legalization of uh, marijuana. Where, where do you stand on that? Well, I've always said it very outspoken. I am the, the, the greatest amount of morbidity and mortality that we see in our country for drugs are for the legal drugs. And not because they are most dangerous, not at all. We cannot say that nicotine is more dangerous than heroin or methamphetamine or more addictive. The reason why many more people die and suffer from the adverse effects is because they are legal. Right. So my, my perception is, can we afford as a society to have a third legal drug? And so it's not about which ones are worse than the others. The legal drug, just by the nature of them being legal, expose many more people. And by probability, you end up with a higher number of people suffering of adverse consequences. So can we afford it? 
Well, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. It's you fascinating as always. Thank you.